So your bagel? Oh. No. What is it's it? It's from uh, Crumbs Bakery. It's not from Crumbs Bakery. You know, my cupcake uh, uh, is is for Gary's charity, Life Beat, which right. is it fights you know AIDS and stuff. And uh, Gary came to me, and you know, I like trying to do charitable stuff, and and uh, said if we have a cupcake named after you, you plug it. All the proceeds will go to this life beat age thing, and since we did that over a year ago, it's been a lot of money. It's been like substantial, like over thirty grand, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. It hasn't been that much, but they handed us a check for ten grand a couple of weeks ago with more on the way. Right, okay. and I was happy about that. So after the this high pitch mic tirade, I guess uh, it got around to a bunch of people. <sighs> Uh, and this is Life Beat, the charity, writing a letter to Jason Bauer, who's the crumbs guy. Okay. Dear Jason, it is with sincere regret that I write to let you know that Life Beat can no longer accept donations from the sale of the Artie Lang cupcake. Wow. It has recently come to my attention. <laughs> it has recently come to my attention that Artie has made a very offensive statement on the radio regarding HIV AIDS infection, as well as other remarks offensive to the constituency Life Beat serves. I don't know what that is. A national HIV AIDS prevention organization and advocate for people living with AIDS, LifeBeat condemns the remarks made by Mr. Lang and cannot in good conscience accept further donations from goods or services that are associated with Mr. Lang. <laughs> Under the circumstances, I trust that you can understand our position. We do appreciate your past generosity and hope that your interest in LifeBeat's mission will continue with other projects. Wow. you got to feel like a real dick. Now, you know, look, I, I do. heal you are. And I told Gary. You're I said, I said, <laughs> you really you know, are. What, what did you tell him? What the, see, can I, I got to talk about what the comments were because I was in a, a most uncomfortable board meeting where this was discussed. You right. Know? Yeah. And everyone's looking at me because, you know, I'm the Artie Lang guy. Yeah, so what did you say? You know, so here are the I comments. I just shut up. I'd just be like, look, man, I don't know. Here's what happened. They I got, can't defend him. They yeah. got well, emails. they know the comments. They heard it. They got email complaints right. from several people in the gay community asking, how can you work with a guy when Artie said on two different occasions to a guy, I hope you die of AIDS. Right. Talk about I hope you fact. get AIDS you soon. I hope about. your lover takes the rubber off tonight and oh. fucks you in his ass with an a his AIDS-ridden cock. And you come in here tomorrow with fucking sores on your face. Why are you getting so angry? 40 fucking pounds. What is going on, You know what, Howard, Howard. Artie, what's Howard, going on? Howard, what's going on? Fuck you. What do I want to say something to him? No, I mean, what's going on? Let Why are you so mad? Let me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. What are you talking about? Let me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. It ain't going to be a CD. It's going to be my fucking fist in your All face. All right, get out of here. I'm not because I'm a gay basher. Feel the shit from that from that sister comment, dude. Feel it all coming down on you. And it'll continue to come down on you. Yeah, forever, forever, you'll be praying for AIDS. I, I was, I was mad at an individual person, and uh, yeah, but you. On top of that, you're calling him a fag. Yeah, yeah your, right. your way of berating yeah, him right. was to say, I'll pull, I'll "I think pull, you're gay." I told Gary, I'll pull tapes of him saying the same shit to people. When straight guys it's get true. mad, they do that sometimes. I've heard Gary go. I, have, I, or, I didn't about, think I did it, and I already pointed out I didn't. I, he's oh, right. but yeah, Fred but, plays it all the time. But he I calls think Elliot that, off on a fucking homo. And, uh, I think that a tirade of... <laughs> yeah, go take another hairbrush in your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking homo. <laughs> you so, uh, fucking homo. Yeah, there you go. Have <laughs> they heard that statement? Do they want to keep working with you? Yeah, you might be off the board now. You're trying to get rid of me, or No, I'm not. That I'm trying to say... pulsating cock was fully encased what, in my mouth. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying... <laughs> I would be willing to apologize just because... Who gives a shit? Who gives okay. a fuck? I feel bad that they're not going to get the money anymore. I mean, I I, I would he, like them to keep the getting thing. the money. Look, here's the bottom oh, line. Can I ask two questions? Because here's what came from the meeting. I really would. Do, are you sorry for what you said? Yes. absolutely. I, I, look, I'm not sorry th that I said anything to, to that mic jerk off. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if look, if someone heard that who has AIDS or has a relative with AIDS or a friend, I realize how that could be very painful. And I'm sorry about that. I'm on a radio show and I say a lot of shit that's offensive. I, I would never want to upset somebody who had a disease like that. No. So uh, I'm sorry about that. If I know that would already... And again, maybe yeah, I don't agree with Artie's statement, but I do know as someone who tries to be funny five hours a day, and sometimes you get worked up on the air, and you're trying also to be sort of funny. He was it was his attempt at humor, but yes, but Artie has the same had point, a number. He's had George Takei say to him, "You've got to stop this stuff." When did he say that? He said well, that after, he, he said that after the same incident. There's one yes, time. Yes, but you've continued. Right, see, there was a second. See, there's a guy. Here's what's going on. There's a guy that listens to our show. 
who's gay, right. who's monitoring what Artie says, and then sending letters to the New York Times and the New York Post and oh, all that right. stuff. Fuck him. So it wasn't the first time. It was <laughs> the, it was the so second time. If you're listening, time. fuck you. Get a life. Mm. Well, I, this is not my this is not my stance. I don't I don't what about, I don't you, hope you anybody dies of AIDS. I got mad once. Shouldn't and the said top it. priority be to cure AIDS? So who cares where the money yeah, comes it's from? It's good money actually well, because actually, yeah. this bad thing that Artie says is raising money for a good cause. See, we, we don't. Right. I could we point don't, the bad shit. I, I could pull a tape of all of us saying bad shit about gay people. <laughs> never me. Well, not not, me. never Robin. I love gay <laughs> people. But I think I think so, I, I guarantee I can remember one incident with you where you you went over the line. I thought with gay shit. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? I, I, you know, I, well, I, why turn all of us in? I'm not turning all these in. No, I'm why just run saying, it for us? We want a cupcake. I don't want people to think this is my like stance in life. This is my opinion. I hope well, you But you got to gay comedian. You got to change some of your. Like I, I think you know, I used to use uh, a lot more gay humor, and over the years, I've become more sensitive. You definitely have. There's I no have. doubt. Well, I, society is so become, maybe you got to just become a little more sensitive to this. I mean, you know, you watch Eddie Murphy's uh, thing, Delirious, in 1983. He says right. fag about. Two million but it's times, right, but it's not changed. 1983. But that's that it. was also I, I, that's the comedy I grew up on, and it's definitely an influence on me. And here's uh, the thing: already snap out of I'm it. I'm going to contact Livebeat. I'm being serious now. I would like you to figure out a way where they could still get money. All I right. Won't, I would won't you be my... willing to go to the board of Livebeat and make out with a dude? In front of them. <laughs> no. Because that's what they've requested. No. This is how pro-gay I am. <laughs> you need to take out your cock at a blowjob from another man. Do you want me to catch AIDS? <laughs> no, you guys, will not Guys, 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 help me out here. i got to go to these fucking meetings. <laughs> oh, okay. They're neither one of them helping you out. <laughs> I know. I, you Did know, you tell them that Artie took a load from a guy in his chest? Yeah, what about, what I about told that? Them, I t- <laughs> see, here's the, th- here's the thing that's hard to communicate to the board. I know that I've been Artie, to Met Games. I know that Artie oh, didn't no. mean it. You know what I mean? I of course not. I don't want anybody to die of AIDS. They said, is there is there any promise that you can give us? And I don't know how, you know, they weren't asking me to give them a promise, but they, they yeah, said... Yeah, Fafa working with you. Are you sure that he would never do it again? And no. I said I wasn't sure. Was no. Like, oh. You know what? I could almost guarantee... Hey, I Artie, wouldn't, why don't you I go... Wouldn't, I wouldn't wish anybody dead of AIDS. I could guarantee Art, that. Why don't you go the other way and make a cupcake for an anti-gay organization like those God-hate fags people? Uh, you know what? We you may have I mean? to contact them. <laughs> make a Somebody cupcake. will take that money. No, I would never do that. I know. Never. I know. All right, listen. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. And you're going to have to put it behind you. And maybe, uh, maybe you'll this uh, think happens. before I you speak. I got kicked off the board of my charity. Yes, I remember you that. Was you did? Why? Yeah, because yeah. I'm on this show. You what charity uh, was that, Robin? Uh, the um, Child Abuse Prevention Program. <laughs> but not because <laughs> of specific statements. Yes, no, no, yeah, she did. Well, oh, yeah. it wasn't a statement I made. It was statements made on the show. Yeah. I, I know exactly. Can I tell the story? Sure. I, I lo- First of all, Robin did more for that charity. Really? They were like a tiny charity, and Robin got them to do it at dinner every year, got us all to go to the dinner, right. got us all involved and everything. Yeah, I remember that. And she was really, uh, you know, really did a lot with that. Um, child prevention, you know, uh, child abuse prevention, and uh, we started to do It's Just Wrong That's on the right. show. Oh. And, okay, so it was, you know... <laughs> you mean where fathers and daughters <laughs> well, no, see, each other? It started with husbands and wives. <laughs> right. Right? And then it went to fathers and daughters, but I think brothers and sisters is where they drew the line. <laughs> right. But they didn't even, like, give, they didn't even call Robin and tell her <laughs> that they were upset. They just sent well, a letter actually, like that. Actually, they were calling frantically, and I wasn't feeling well at the time. And I was just like, look, I can't deal I'm with I'm not you. feeling well. I just saw a father disrobe his daughter. <laughs> That's right. I was like, I can't deal... You know, I used to talk them down because they'd call after every one of these things right. and i used to talk them down and make sense to them every time and and calm them down but that time i was just like i'm too sick to to deal with what they're going through well this is coming and they a, kicked me off this is coming at a bad time because <laughs> right after i get this letter right after i got that letter teddy handed me my bullet points for my psa about the not saying that oh uh, yeah Second. george takei <laughs> i gotta record that now. by the way george takei got Artie to Record a PSA yeah. to promise to record a PSA that is that that promotes the fact that you should not gay bash and that you should not use the word fag. And do you right. know why you that faggot? Came about it? it had nothing to do with. <laughs> so, You're a that's... fucking loser, faggot. All right. Well, so anyway, losers weren't upset at that statement. So anyway, <laughs> so now George sent Artie bullet points. Yeah. This is for the public service announcement. Yeah, and Let again, the incident that spawned this was when I came out to him. I didn't think I had any of this in me, and maybe I was repressing it. And he told me the same exact story. It was so freeing, first of all. Yeah, right. Um, as I'm sure you know, well, maybe in... Well, I think I, I know what you're leading But I was so... Uh, it was so freeing. Yeah. And um, we... Uh, 
we just let we just let it all go and um well, you know uh, i'm really touched that you're sharing this with me well it, well i gotta tell you george you're such a compassionate nice person and you know my life and my comedy and what i'm based on right, and everything right. and i i hate myself for jokes i've made I, I gotta tell you it's never happened again now this was when i was 24 years old but we had full yeah. Gay sex. Yeah. We had. Uh, right. We we. Uh, I gave him oral. He gave me oral. Um, I uh, I I had. I gave. You know. I fucked him in the ass, and and he uh, he fucked me in the ass. So he was really hurt by that, and he goes, "Okay, to pay me back, you know, the guilt yeah. trip." Will you do this uh, PSA for the human rights organization? First of all, I don't know where the fuck they're going to air this. He goes, you know, exactly. YouTube. But yeah, nowhere. I, I have to just wing it, but hit bullet points. No television channel is going to put on an Arnie Lang public service announcement uh, promoting not using the word gay or fat. Right. So, but how? But listen to these bullet points. How am I going to me? How Let am me I going to sound? They didn't write it. You're supposed to just riff and use these bullet right. points. Right. How am I going to sound sincere? Uh, <laughs> words that are meant to hurt people. <laughs> Words whose sole purpose is to say that some people are worth less than others are wrong. <laughs> Over the years, I have made jokes about gay people using one of those words. It was easy for a long time using the anti-gay F word, making jokes about other guys, but not anymore. <laughs> uh, Quite frankly, it's just as easy. But In 2008, I'm resolving to make a change. Knowing gay people, including my friend George Takei, who appears with me on The Howard Stern Show... It's helped me to see that the anti-gay F word isn't funny. I'm going to stop saying that word this year. At the same time, I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> and sometimes I may slip up. So for all of 2008, I'm going to donate $100 <laughs> to the Human Rights Campaign, the country's largest gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, uh, transgender organization. They're probably not going to take your money. Each and every time I slip up. If you catch me on tape, on ca whoa, I didn't see this part. What? If you catch me on tape, on camera phone, anywhere there's a recording of me saying the word, send it in, and I will make the donation. Oh. Wait, Artie, so I might get to believe that not only is it if you say it on the show, but if I'm at a restaurant and yes. I can catch you at a tirade, I could get 100 bucks a pop? Right. Yeah, you can't even say it in your personal life. Wow. Dude. <laughs> that could be a major... You're going to be broke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hope well, my bookie's going to have to pay me now. If, uh... <laughs> Well, you know, uh, David Letterman supports gay people. He does, uh, I have to call him calling uh, a gay bathhouse. <laughs> you want to hear that? Yes, I love that call. You like that call. All right. Wait. I do, too, if I could find it. Thank you for calling. How may I help you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Very good. My name's Vinny Favale. <laughs> are you familiar with David Letterman? Yes, I am. Okay. We'd like to make some arrangements to shut down the club for a couple of hours and have him come in. Have him come in in where? To the gay bathhouse. <laughs> have David Letterman come in to the bathhouse. Well, hold, hold on because here's, here's Rupert. Rupert happens to be David's lover. Hold on. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hey, I'm Rupert. I'm, uh, I'm in with Dave. Okay. We want to find a little bit about your facilities. All right. Let me put Dave on the phone. Okay. Hold on one second. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Is is this the? Uh, have I got the uh, the bathhouse? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me let me ask you something now. Uh, because you know this is this is very uh, between us. No problem. All right. Now let me. Are are there are there towel boys available? Um, they're not towel boys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there are guys in here, customers who come in here who wear towels. Right. And, and uh, what's what's your nationality? My nationality? Yeah. I'm African American. Oh, black. Yes. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're pretty well hung, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty well hung. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of money, and I know you uh, you, you black people like a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume any nationality like that. What do you, what do you say money. we get together? Uh, your, your penis and my money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got internships coming up uh, pretty soon. You know. But I'm sure you can find... Stop laughing, you homo. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a top or a bottom, sir? I'm a bird. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> so your log is brown and you want to get up to browner, right? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I think we could do that. <laughs> so 
are you guys coming? Do you ever get a little mud on the helmet? Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, don't like it. <laughs> don't are, like are you a big fan of Paul Schaefer's? Uh, 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 yeah, sure. He's a great musician. You you could taste his ass on my cock. <laughs> <laughs> I pay him in cock, and, and he sucks a big dick. <laughs> How can I help you? Because I have other customers right now. Can I fuck you in the ass, sir? <laughs> no. We'll, we'll, we'll make it a stupid human trick. <laughs> Are you guys coming down here? I'll, I'll give you my top ten inches. How would that be? <laughs> hey, are you there? Wow. Homo. I'm... Hello, homo. <laughs> Fudge Packer. So, <laughs> that guy owes three thousand dollars to Georgia uh, Case Charity. You know, well, I'm in all seriousness, I'm very, very sorry. It's so terrible when you get kicked off a charity. Yeah. Yeah. So am I, because I I really would like them to keep getting the money. I mean, it actually whenever we did that about three times we presented them a check and yeah. it always made me feel good. Well, I mean it really did. I, don't, I feel like I don't wish AIDS on anybody in the world. I don't feel you're anti gay, but I think some of your rhetoric was in other words, it's hard for them to associate right. with you. If you're that vehement in your, you know, in your uh, it, language, it Look, in your I respect. Attacks. I respect yeah. their integrity. I mean, yeah. it is money, and they don't want money from the wrong places. But I, I would say that based on that one, it tirade, would be like you know the Anti Defamation League taking money from Hitler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's quite as extreme, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it reminds me too, like. When that political correctness curve started to go over, like, I remember Kennison. Do you remember that Kennison, uh, when he was hosting something, sure. El Elton John called him a pig? Right. Remember that? Yeah. And there was that bit he did that really had people up in arms. And this is when it started to turn, I think, about um, Rock Hudson. Remember that bit he did about Rock Hudson going, <laughs> it was that last cock. Why'd I suck it? Why'd I suck it? Well, all right. Well, I mean, the was... Artie Lang cupcake <laughs> is is still there. It's still there. I don't know if it is. Uh, well, they haven't canceled your cupcake. Crumbs just got the letter that Lifebeat won't be accepting any money for Well, it. I better be getting the money now, then. <laughs> <laughs> Where's all the money going? Well, I'm sorry, Artie. I know that probably does hurt you. I, it, you know what? It does. So, I'm sorry, guys. I was a good... Uh, was it was a, great, a good run. It was a good run. Yeah, we had a great run together. <laughs> Gary, do you think Artie's really remorseful for uh, for what he said, or just because he kind of like got caught? I don't even know that he's remorseful. He seemed more irritated that they threw him off the board. It wasn't more like, I'm sorry. It's more like, you guys do it too. I can't believe I'm getting fucked. And he's, yeah, he seemed to throw you under the bus a little bit. Yeah, you know, and I have used the word. I really didn't even thought I had used it, and, you know, I probably won't use it again. Is this gonna? Is it gonna make it uh, awkward for you now? Since uh, you know, at the charity. No, it was already awkward enough at the board meeting <laughs> but when we discussed this. I don't. I can't imagine it get any more awkward than that. Hey, Artie. So, dude, are you remorseful about your uh, your comments? No, not at all. No, paid a hundred bucks. Do you? Uh, do you give us a little taste of what your PSA is gonna sound like? Don't say fag. You know, I, I today the big headline in the newspaper, especially here in New York, is that. They found out, now this is shocking, that our ex-governor who had to resign for going to a prostitute, turns out he might have gone to a whole nother prostitute. He turned up on another client list. <laughs> yeah. But, but now, now, first of all, wouldn't you have expected, I mean, do you really think Elliot Spitzer, this was the first time he went to a hooker? If he's into hookers, he probably tried different. But the thing is, this guy, you know, he's a public official. Yeah. Okay. So he tried one prostitution service. Stick with that one. Because at least if you start to spread it around to all the different services, it's going to get out. It, people start to talk. They and do. Yeah, it's, it just gets ridiculous. He so wanted to get caught. And plus, he wired funds. Who does that except for Jerry Springer? When he was, when he was mayor of Cincinnati, he wrote a check to a hooker. Yeah. That's how he got caught. Elliot was, I mean, he knows you see, this guy does investigations. You can't wire money. It's exactly how you catch a guy. It's amazing how badly he wanted to get caught. He really didn't want the job. I love the post, though. And there he hoes again. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there, there's a book out of great post headlines I just really? read. About. And you know what's really embarrassing? Not only to Elliot Spitzer, but to all men. The chick that they show on the cover of the post today, that the, the latest one he's banging, is a fat chick. He paid a fat chick to fuck him. Well, she's the madam, and she says she serviced him yeah. personally. Yes. And, you know, she's wow. really not that attractive. And he paid her. And I know the wife's got to be saying, I don't understand something. I'm way more attractive than this girl. Why? And this is something women are never going to understand. What happened there? I might my throat for a second. But this is something women are not going to understand. That for a guy, it isn't always about the looks. 
you could take an uglier chick, but if she really has desire and really knows how to lick your sack and do all the wild yeah, things. Yeah, the dirty stuff you won't do. Yeah, it's it's so much more exciting. You know, sex is a funny thing for a guy. It's got to, you know... But w- why won't you tell your wife what you want? Because then they don't even do it anyway. Look, and then a- if they... They, they, <laughs> they, they see, won't do it and then they look down on you. But it's not even fun if you have to tell someone what... What like, you have to tell this chick? Look, Robin, there's a certain type of rim job I take from a hooker who looked like Martin Scorsese. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I've never been with chicks who give a rim job. But- I've never, well, I've never had a girl tongue my asshole. You know, never. most non-hooker I don't even know that I want won't that. do that. Yeah, but I don't know that I even want it. Oh, you want it. But it's, I do. <laughs> Listen, I... You've had that. <laughs> I, 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 this is one of... The only time I had a threesome was with two hookers. All right. And it, I didn't pay for it, though, but someone set it up for me. Well, how's that happen? Uh, I was in Vegas. Uh, you know what? I was opening up for Norm at the Rio in Vegas, and uh, this guy who uh, who was like our liaison, taking us around to to the show and dinner. I can't believe Lifebeat doesn't want your money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they hear this story; they'll they'll start accepting the money again. He says to me, "I see him," and this guy says to me, "He's like a real party guy." And like Norm didn't want anything to do with him because he was creeped out by him. But you know, I would get into Vegas and. You know, sometimes I get like some ecstasy and take it to stay up all night. Oh, Jesus. Right. And um, I can't believe Norm was creeped out by that behavior. Because <laughs> uh, you're you know, getting you... rim drops from hookers and ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I would get I get into Vegas. I didn't feel like going to sleep. I'd I literally fly from L.A. with like a toothbrush, and I'd have to open two nights in a row. So I wouldn't want to oversleep. So I would take an ecstasy, not even get high, just to stay up to do the show. But this guy got me the ecstasy. So he knew all these contacts. Right. So after one weekend of that... Uh, Get to the rim job. Right. So uh, I, he says to me... Uh, uh, talking a long-winded. Yeah, this, talk this about guy, a long-winded story. <laughs> Jimmy Florentine's breaking up with you. A bunch of people <laughs> laughing at that part of the story. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm doing backstory on the character. Go ahead. So the next time we go back, he knows I like to kind of party and hang out. So he says to me... Uh, he <laughs> Figure he, that out. He, uh, he gives me the like a couple of hits of ecstasy and he goes hey uh listen go upstairs and just get um get comfortable and i'm going to send you up someone from the hotel is going to brief you on the itinerary for this weekend uh-huh. and he had never done that before i'm like itinerary i just you know the show times are eight and then you know he's like no nah, i just get really there's going to be some different stuff this weekend so i go up there and it's the nicest suite still i've ever had at a hotel uh, someone dropped out and i got like a suite like norm had i had a little pool in the fucking thing and the rio it wraps around and you see all of vegas i go up there and uh, there's all booze whiskey set up and 20 minutes later the door uh, there's a knock at the door and i honestly had no inkling i really thought it was going to be an itinerary guy and i open the door and it's too you know God, they were like nines. Wow. Solid nines. A, a brunette see, and see, a blonde. Spitzer needed a friend like this guy. Yeah, right. well, Vegas is full you know, of them. He needed a guy, one guy he could trust. A right. Handler. Like, Ralph's my guy. Like, yeah. Like, when I was single, and and this was, guy and, you know, shit. I didn't want my kids to know, you know, I was dating around and stuff. Right. Ralph would help facilitate where I would meet people and stuff. <laughs> and I could trust him. He never, ever gave out any details. You see, Ralph should go to Vegas. That's yeah. where he might be a career person. Because right. hotels for, for the hot, hot, you know, VIP. No, that would be an actual job. He can't handle that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, does he have to show up all the time? These yeah. guys are slick guys, you know. So they come in, and uh, they they got, like, real hot stripper, like those Hooters-type shirts, belly shirts. Yeah. yeah. And Howard, were, I'll never forget, the one was, they were both smoking, big fake tits, blonde, brunette, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> both of them had that thing where their stomachs were so, like, they were so thin where you could kind of see the hip bones. Yeah, you know, I love that. Oh, my God. I love that. I love them like they look like Biafrans. Yeah, and they were tan right. and, yeah. like, really nice asses. Big fake tits and, and almost no body weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I, it's two big tits should just walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> With legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we'll call the guy <laughs> who set this up Johnny. It's not, but, so he's just Johnny. Uh, wants us to give you a lap dance. And I was like, really? Wow. I mean, these must have been $5,000 whores or something. I mean, they were really <laughs> hot, and they were both in their 20s, I assume. So uh, I go, do you want a drink? They're like, yeah, I pour them. We, we all do. T- and they drink like strippers. We're doing straight shots of warm jack. Oh. They must we're going to need a triple, pal. Well, that's what it seemed like, because <laughs> they, they were both down in drinks. Know, like they were, how big a job this was. They were drinking like it's Dean either Martin. That or, either that or 30 showers after we fucked <laughs> you. That's what they were doing. Like, they were like, oh, you got a little, 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 little
Thank you. Yes. So I, we sit on the this, we sit on this big velour like blue Vegas type couch, real cheesy, and we all have drinks. And they they start giving me a lap dance, and mm. they they get into their thongs, they get topless, and then they're in minutes just completely naked, and they're going wow. on my shirt and shit and. Rubbing your titties? Uh, yeah, well, I'm rubbing my titties. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, was this when the, you were heavy or were you? No, uh, I was actually very thin. Okay. Uh, okay. It was, it, it, this is Th- like. That makes it so much sexier. This is about five months before I got the job with you guys. Okay. Because right, it was the second season of the show. So I, uh, so they, they, st- one of them starts, the blonde starts making out with me. And oh. the blonde was clearly like filthier. Yeah. Pig. And uh, but Dirty I was pig. more attracted to the brunette. It's uh, weird. Isn't know? it so, always the way it is? I, I like. I which I know you've said this before. Threesomes <laughs> are weird. I'd rather be one hot chick I can focus on because you don't know what to do. <laughs> so they go, hey, let's let's get more comfortable in the bedroom. And I go in there, and I, I'm waiting for like you know the, the stroke of midnight. Like when? How much did he pay for here? <laughs> and uh, we go in the bedroom. We get on the bed, and uh, I aggressively go towards the brunette because mm-hmm. I just thought she was hotter. Right. And just more my type and uh i start making out with her and the uh, the other chick is like kissing my neck and stuff and uh wow and then the, he must have paid a fortune and then the one the, and then the, <laughs> the blonde the, the the filthier one had rubbers so uh she of put course. she put the blonde puts a rubber on me with her mouth nice and then uh and then i lean over and i start banging the brunette right and uh they don't care i'm banging her and uh you know, uh, at this point, sort of in my head, it was it was so much fun. But I'm thinking, what's the like? Is the is the what's blonde the cleaning me out? Yeah, <laughs> like, what's the blonde doing? I should have made the blonde clap her hands so she wouldn't steal anything. So you tell me the blonde put her tongue up your so, ass. So right, so yeah. Oh. So while I'm like you know doing missionary with this uh, girl, I I'm wondering where the the blonde is. And yeah, sure enough, I feel her starting to kiss my back. And it gets lower and lower. Oh my god! And she fucking she she, she just shoved her tongue in my ass. Wow! And uh, and I like went. I went whoa! <laughs> wow! I I, uh, I didn't know what to do at first. I was like, oh my god! And then you should have just taken a shit. Uh, and I was starting to think, when did I shit last? Did I shit on That's the plane? What I mean. But thank God I hadn't. I'd showered in L.A. Right. Wow. Nice. So. I, at first it was showered in LA. At first it was startling. Do you forget the brunette you're banging? No. Well, you can't you I'm, continue your motion? I'm there? having intercourse. Did you blow your load in a second? So what that? happened was at first it was startling and I thrust it forward so hard I almost like I almost crushed the brunette. <laughs> and then I was gonna say get out of there and then man, she was she was good at it because hmm. she gave me and it's one of the only ones I've ever gotten, she she gave me a rim job. Wow. I mean, and and a it, thorough it, tongue bath. It became so sensual. Really? And like so erotic. Wow. Uh, I I about about 20 seconds later had like the most incredible like orgasm I've ever had, you know, banging the other uh-huh. shit. Do you think that, it, was it weird that you just made out with her and you're thinking how many, how many of the tongues, you know, how many times she's tongued a guy's ass? I was able to put that out of my head. Yeah, uh, but you definitely don't kiss her again, right? Nah, uh, no. no. <laughs> so I gave, after, after that I gave, I gave them both a, a, an ecstasy. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, she needed it, so for generous. sure. <laughs> and uh, then the other one, uh, then the blonde started blowing me again. Uh-huh. Wow. And from the ecstasy, though, it takes a long time to come. And uh, she must have been getting a crimp in her neck or something. And uh, I ended up finishing, but it took a while. So I, ended up, I, I came twice. and wow. You know, and I said, do I, do I owe you anything? I was, and she said, no, no, we, we have strict instructions not to take a thing from you. Uh, and they were good whores because they wow. wouldn't take a thing. And, and I went back downstairs, and uh, he was at the crap stable, this guy Johnny. Right. And he looked at me. He was a typical like Vegas party guy. Like sometimes these guys are pains in the ass, but there's times they're the guy you want around. Right. <laughs> so he goes, "Hey, how was the itinerary?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I walked up to him and I said, "The only thing I could think of saying, I said, what? No redhead." <laughs> Wow. Well, do you know that uh, on 2020 last week, they had a two-hour series on prostitution in America? Right. And what they uncovered was these girls don't like their job. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? I asked, I asked Diane them. Diane Sawyer to find but out. But bo- they sure know how to act because, you know, to, she didn't need to put her tongue up on no. his asshole. I mean, that was pretty nice. She Pete, felt you're neglected. On the air. And I, I yeah. begged the guy, Johnny, to, I, how much did you pay? I said, I got to know how much you paid him because... And you know what he said to me? He goes, you know, you'll be depressed. Don't worry about it, man. They're friends of mine. 
and oh, he, he wow. never gave me the the number. But yeah. I said, "What if I want to hire them?" Because I'll give you the number, but I don't worry about it. It's not me, you know. That thing. Wow, wow. Uh, Pete. So they got stiffed. <laughs> she ate your asshole for free. Now, I got a feeling this guy, you know, did favors for them. Right. Yeah, Pete, you're on the air. Hey now, what's up, Howard? Hey now. Yeah, I had an ex girlfriend, a uh, Puerto Rican girl, and uh, say we no were, more. You no, know, we were doing it, you know, and oh, I like Artie ecstasy. First time I ever did it. She's like. I don't know, four or five times she's done it. So she's telling me, oh, I do this thing great and blah, blah, blah. So uh, she's like, just, you know, lay on your stomach. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know, what's going on here? Next thing you know, she's got her tongue up my ass, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I'm all effed up from the ecstasy, and I, I don't know what the hell to think. I loved it. I loved it. Every time after that, I had to do it. Wow. See, she did it once. Now she's t- eating your ass every single time. Right, yeah. Every single time. Well, you know, it's a th- I'm not going to say it's a thing well, with we Puerto Rican about- girls, <laughs> but there's a guy I know and uh, who, will rename, who will remain nameless Yeah. who uh, was dating this Puerto Rican girl. And he said to me, I will only date Puerto Rican girls. He goes... This chick put her tongue up my ass. He said, the hairs on my arm stood up. Robin knows the guy. Yeah. yeah. And I said, you're kidding. I said, you think that's like a Puerto Rican thing? He goes, I've dated a ton of white broads, and no one had put their tongue up there in my ass. So only this Puerto Rican girl. And he I'm says, she's a real great. player. Well, what we were talking about was And then he went and married a white chick. A guy <laughs> goes to a hooker. Right. Right. And so you're telling me these women who claim to love you and want to spend the rest of their lives with you and... They don't love you. And, you know, <laughs> plight you their troth, whatever that is, they won't do this stuff. They probably do it, but only under protest. Yeah, that's Robin why. Will you eat a guy's kidding. ass? Honestly. You're like a proper lady. I'm not lady. married to anybody. Yeah, but you won't, you won't eat a guy's ass. You don't want to do that. I have no idea. <laughs> nah. Well, I know you. You're just not eating any ass. A lot of guys, especially mama's boys like myself, Italians have that Madonna whore thing, you know. Yeah. The wife you got to marry a good girl. The wife doesn't do shit like that. But but it's also hot when a chick likes all kinds of wild shit done to her. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So. Robin loves eating my ass. <laughs> you're not supposed uh, to tell. But Jimmy, that was, Jimmy uh, does Robin ever eat your ass? <laughs> With a knife and a fork. (laughs) All right, I got to take a break. I'm running uh, late here. Uh, We'll be back right after these words. Hey, it's Artie Lang, and this is one to grow on. Uh, I advocate uh, getting rim jobs from two whores and a threesome. Uh, Brunette, blonde, if you can get a redhead and there's fire in the hole, that's great as long as it's not a three-alarm fire. Make sure she shaves. And... uh, it's an extra fifty dollars for some of these disgusting, filthy, slut cunts to lick your asshole dry, and um, and sense use their tongue as a bidet, and uh, give you a rim job. So I'm four whores, I'm four threesomes, I'm four rim jobs, and uh, I'm for America, and that's one to grow on. We should do the man boobs contest every day, Robin. I've never gotten such positive feedback. Really? That was liked it. one of the funniest bits ever. By the way, also winning people over, Artie and Gary. I like to tell Artie and Gary that they, they are going to Iraq, and doing that and visiting the troops is a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. Not only are the troops seeing entertainment, but they'll be seeing family. And uh, all who listen to this show feel a connection to the cast. It will give a lot of hope and normalcy to the lives of the guys that see anything but that. Artie and Gary... God bless you to both you fat fucks. Wow, how nice! Isn't that nice? Uh, the tour, the tour might have improved. <laughs> the tour might have improved tenfold yesterday because uh, it looks like uh, Colin Quinn may be able to come. Ooh. Oh, you're very lucky. Yes. Hey Howard, don't let Gary go to Iraq. It's a disaster waiting to happen. The location that they'll be at could come under heavy fire, and a sniper trying to concentrate on killing the enemy will be distracted by Bowie coming up to him and trying to make conversation. I fear yeah. the. Gary will be bored, and the enemy will get the upper hand. That's a feasible plot. He will distract the troops because he is so hungering for conversation. Excuse me. Excuse me, does anybody have free time to discuss the war with me? <laughs> I'm very bored of sitting in my tent waiting for the show, which I don't do. Artie's still in his sleeping bag. <laughs> All the problems he's going to have lunch with me today, but I don't know. This one says, Howard, please don't ever stop impersonating Gary Bored in Vegas. It's absolutely hysterical. I can't stop laughing out loud at my desk. All right, I'll, I was going to stop it. I'll keep going for you. No, you can't. Please don't stop. Fan of Sal's ass. Your ass. All right, well, whatever. There it is. 
A lot of different email. Robin, go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. Health Magazine has named the healthiest restaurants in America. Oh, mm-hmm. I bet you pumps on there. I bet you it's not. Really? They're talking about national chains. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uptown Pizza? Maybe healthy. Uno, Chicago Grill, number one. Really? That's yeah. all that deep uh, yeah. pan pizza. Mm-hmm. Well, they're saying it's healthy. I don't know what they used as criteria. I'm just telling you what they said was good. They even named uh, the top five fast food restaurants. Number one, Noodles and Company. Uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill it was number two. Cozy is number three. Cozy. I'm going to Cozy. <laughs> I want some healthy fast food. <laughs> Panera was number four. And Au Bon Pain. Au uh, Bon Pain. What's Au Bon Pain? Both. I'm going to Au Bon Pain. <laughs> I'm fucking bored. <laughs> Audie bon promised me a 10 hour lunch at Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> I piss by Chipotle all the time. I think it's like a, an appliance store or something. I hate that word, Chipotle. It's, it's, a, it's a grim place for a three-hour lunch. <laughs> Which three I'm going to have with Artie. Artie promised me a three-hour lunch. Wow. I did. I remember saying it. Why was it going to be a three-hour lunch? Because we had to catch up, and we were in Vegas. There's nothing to do. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was the ecstasy talking. <laughs> I would have been bored if I had my Dancing with the Stars on TiVo. <laughs> if we go to Vegas, we're probably going to need to have a three-hour lunch. There's nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> what people can't see on the radio is the, <laughs> the face you make right after the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> You cross your eyes and put your teeth way out. I will walk back and forth between Art of Shaving and Chipotle until Artie wakes up. I'm wondering how many times he looked out the door just to see that do not disturb. Oh, I just walked to Art of Shaving. Took me 10 minutes there, 10 minutes back, and Artie's sign is still on his door. You know, I just do picture, not disturb. I just picture Gary. I told him I'd wake up at 11. I slept till 7.30 p.m. <laughs> Artie swore to me he'll wake up at 11. I was almost late for an 8 p.m. show. <laughs> I can't believe he's sleeping through our three-hour eat and greet. <laughs> I'll go back down to Artie's shaving. I promise you when I get back, because my shave will take at least a half hour. What's that? They're full? Oh, no. Let me call for a massage. Hmm. I don't want to go to a store. I don't like to shop. I already read a book. I already did everything. I watched TV with Nick. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go visit Teddy. I'll go to Teddy's room with Nick. Yeah, because that'll be exciting. And we could take pictures of how we look. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was... I wish I was Plastic Man from the comic books. I would slide on the Artie's door and wake him up. He's <laughs> really sleeping. I mean, if I was Mr. Fantastic, I could slide through the door. <laughs> Give me Mr. Shot in the head if he wakes me up. <laughs> I can't wait for Iraq. I'm gonna. Hey, sh- guess what's not Iraq? Me. You. Right. <laughs> in Iraq, I'm going to see if I can count. As high as I can without stopping. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven. Hmm. Is Artie up? <laughs> Artie's still sleeping. <laughs> I read five books. There's still a do not disturb on Artie's tent. I know. I'll call Nick and see if he wants to count with me. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to count with you, motherfucker. How Artie, many books has he taken to Iraq? Because one 14, didn't last very long in Vegas. 14 hours. <laughs> I'm bringing Billy Crystal's book. It was quite good. 700 Sunday. I'm going to go to the desert and count the sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not for nothing, uh, but my, my agent asked me to... I don't want to make Gary feel bad, but my agent asked me to uh, make up like... Uh, a rider about to go over there. Uh-huh. And when I originally, one of my best friends was going to come, my best friend Jake. And uh, I told my uh, agent, I said, Jake. <laughs> I said, in the rider, could you put the Jake gets a first class ticket and everything? And then, and then 
Conan called me back and said, listen, if Gary goes, Jake can't go. <laughs> I'm looking at Sal in the hall. He's got a, on, the, on the door, it says, Artie's room, do not disturb. <laughs> and he's in the big Gary mask, scratching his head, trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> Why don't you go to Artie's shaving? Yeah, that's down the hall. Do Why don't you go, go to Artie's shaving, Gary, and then come back and see if Artie's sign is down. Hey, what are you doing interrupting Artie's story about how I fucked up his friend Jake coming on a show? <laughs> He's eating the do not disturb sign. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they'd much rather see you. I don't care. It's the point. You're right. I don't fuck what they want. I want to know what you want. I want you to come. I'm busting you. I, I know, but you're sending out weird signals. Yesterday you said I was aggressive about coming. I said, hey, Artie, I'd like to come. And you said, all right, you know, if you want to come. I, I wasn't like, I got to go, Artie. I said, boy, I'd really like to come. I'd you like know what? I'm sorry. Nick, I didn't mean that. And you I promise you, you I will not be a bulletin. Nick and I will count the sand together. He will do the odd numbers, and I will do the even. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gary's, Gary's going to talk to me again. Gary's going to be bored in a day. If he was bored in Vegas, imagine when he's in Iraq. Mm. Gary, the troops can't talk to you all day and, like, answer your questions. Yeah, they have to fight the war. I wonder if there's an art of shaving in Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, an art of beheading. <laughs> yeah, they shave real clothes over there. <laughs> All right, thanks. Wait, like Sal is just... <laughs> <laughs> Gary just punched Sal Playing in the with fire. Uh, <laughs> like, Gary hired that guy. <laughs> I really didn't. Howard hired him. I just tolerate him. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, I'm just kidding. I'm fucking with you. You're going to have a great time in Iraq. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Literally. Really, can I answer the question once and for all? Because I really am getting a weird vibe. No, God, absolutely I, not. No. Friend, if you want to bring your friend, I'm fine with it. I swear to God. I, I, no. Jake has already gotten over it. And, uh, <laughs> and I made Jake a, a comedian? Uh, no, he's just a buddy. He's I can take a buddy. buddy. And, uh, I, and my, and my Artie, new. Artie, I promise you, I'm a better choice. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you day and night. And in my new rider, I put down that you get a first class ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Gary's a great guy. You'll have fun. With of course him. he is. Come on. It's going to be a blast. Gary, you know I love you, right? I hope you do. I do. I Never do. mind. I feel in love like crazy. How high can Jake count to? Maybe you should bring in him again. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to Gary. Gary loves to talk. The Jake I'm talking about, I think he can only count to three. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was odd that Gary got the biggest kick out of Jimmy saying I, my stories were a little long. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well. Hey, Robin, I wasn't the one who got the biggest kick out of it. Everyone was. No, no your stories are long. Yeah, but he's fucking you and he thinks they're long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. He doesn't think ugly. they're as long as yours. Do you guys think Robin's long-winded? Gary, do you really think Robin's long-winded? I don't at all. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> So what is Jimmy saying? Like, he's bored with her? He, you know, he really got fucked over on that one. I felt bad for him. She had said that in front of him. Like, oh, some people have accused me of that. So he... <laughs> no! <laughs> what the fuck is that? That was ridiculous. Yeah, That's why ridiculous. Why did they put a box on your <laughs> head? So why don't you do something clever instead of stupid? Sal just threw a box on Gary's head. <laughs> Sal, stop it. We're trying to talk. Stupid. So, so anyway, so Jimmy was just trying to say something <laughs> he thought that Robin might say, and then it backfired on him. Robin, you're the one who first said it, correct? Yeah. Why is it bad that he said it? I didn't say it was bad that he said it. I'm breaking your balls. All right. Let's I move on. I that right up your motherfucking ass. Uh-oh, it's getting crazy mm. out there. What's with him in the fucking box? Now he's taking the throw in a box over Gary's head when he's talking. Yeah. Surely loves it. He stands there and he just watches. Yeah, he's just standing out of the way, too. He doesn't want to get hit by flying fists. This well, is why I love Howard TV. There's a whole visual that goes on. <laughs> when I'm talking to Gary and goofing on him, Sal's in the hole in the Gary mask, running around like a lunatic. Then, he's, then he gets even crazier and takes a box that has dope on it and throws it on right. Gary's head. Well, the you, real, you realize that like Sal's life is shit. And so you, when he gets to goof on me, it's, just, it's like his great moment. No more box, Here Sal. Here he comes Dude. with the box again. <laughs> so, Gary, this... Um, this whole thing about you being bored is really getting out of hand. Apparently not for the show, it isn't. <laughs> it's not getting to you? Like, nah, you know what? It's, it's just goofy. It's, you know, and there's been things that have gotten to me worse. It, it, you know, they're carrying on. I'm sure Howard's been bored in his life. I, all roads on this one lead to Ralph, by the way. I believe Ralph is the one who uh, has perpetuated this, but that's okay. And it I, seems like Sal's benefiting. 
but uh, <laughs> he's giving him uh, it's con- amazing content. for Sal because Sal's such a fucking great comedian he gets to put on a mask and walk around and you know use all that clever wit that he has.